And this is something that we have to take into consideration when we're thinking about how we're developing children, how quickly they are expected to develop, uh, and, and what the, the outcome is going to be from our perspective to help them get to, the, um, to fulfill their potential. So there's a number of polls that have covered this topic over the, over the past 10, 15 years. Um, YouGov poll in the UK found that children spend half as much time outside um, compared to the parents from, from you know, 20 years prior. So children in the 1980s were spending um, around 20 hours a week outdoors, playing, having fun, playing games, much of which in, in um, this part of the world would have been football. Um, 2016, we found that, um, that players were, were spending around 10 hours outside. And actually children playing sports on the, on the decline. Um, the Aspen Institute um, did a, a study in um, 2019 as part of their state of play report um, and found that between 2012 and, and 2019 there's about 5% decline in participation in sport. So our expectation that children are going to have the same level of technical ability now is, has got to change because um, they just simply don't have the access to, to, the, to the opportunities to practice that, that one's had. So this is where we can start thinking about how can technology feed into this process? Um, how can they, how can they, uh, how can technology support us as coaches? Um, it's, it's, it's something that is, is quite important. Had an interesting question already about mo motivation um, and technical ability and tactical ability. And I will come to that actually very soon in, in the presentation here. So technical development and how do we motivate children? It's a challenge because people are at different levels of development. Um, confidence is a massive thing for children. Um, practice is a really important part of it. And the thing that kind of brings those two things together is success. So confidence, there's lots of research into this. Confidence is generated by people who practice something and have success at it. So if you're working with children who are very basic in their technical development, there's no point asking them to do something that you know is gonna to be too complicated for them. You have to start at the beginning in some cases. And if you're coaching sixes, six-year-olds or seven-year-olds, you'll probably see this more commonly. There might be the odd one who you think, wow, he's so good, but I can guarantee that that kid is self-motivated already and probably practices all the time. They're not the ones that we need to worry about too much in development. It's those ones who aren't self-motivated, who don't have the confidence to, to, to do that work on their own. So by giving them activities that they can see um, progression in, that they can see success from, that then starts to build that confidence. So there's no point looking at what um, an academy player from Manchester United can do at nine years old and expect your nine-year-olds to do that because they won't have the same level of technical ability. And if you put that expectation on kids and ask them to do something that they can't do, well, they won't get success and then they won't build confidence. So getting the balance right is really important from a, from a technical development perspective. Start with something that they can work on and improve at, praise them for doing well at it, and watch their confidence grow. Um, good habits is something that um, we all want to develop in children, whether it's towards homework, whether it's towards sport, um, whether it's just towards life in general. And, and one of the things that fo football gives us is the ability to create brilliant human beings because we give them good habits, we give them high standards, and we give them praise for when they do things right. But it's really hard work to create people who are self-motivated. Um, I won't go into the science behind it, and I've put a really rudimentary um, equation together here. If we combine a structure with some objectives and we give children praise, and then we add the secret ingredient of com competition, then that will eventually start to drive motivation, or more importantly, start to drive self-motivation. So, what we're talking about there is children who take their own responsibility for practice, 
because they see that they're getting better, they meet their objectives, they have a structure, they receive praise for it, or they receive some recognition for what they're doing. Um, and that drives them to, to become self-motivated. Very basic, but the three things on the top, the four things rather, structure, objectives, praise, and competition, they're really things that come from outside. They're things that we can help with as coaches, that parents can help with, that teammates can help with, and more importantly, that technology can help with. The motivation is an internal factor, and that's ultimately what we're trying to, to build with players. So we give them activities that they can do. We put them into league tables where they can compete with their teammates, and then we give them a chance to improve and get better.